Thank you, worship team. Wonderful, wonderful worship team. You may, may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord? Where we are not sent away. The Lord tells, keeps telling us to come. Just as we are, the call is we come just as we are. I want to thank God for this moment and for this opportunity to be here and to share God's word. I want to honor the bishop and uh, Mom Alice away from uh, this place as they journey to minister to God's people, wherever it is. Um, they very well know that we are here this morning. And I also want to honor the pastors in this house, Pastor Beatrice, Pastor Brian, and the rest of the team that works together here with them. We bring you greetings from the main campus. You didn't hear that. We bring you greetings from the main campus. We are serving the Lord there and we're doing well. We're excited about what God is doing. Amen. I came with the, the whole of my house. Uh, half of them are away. The other half is here. Uh, Esther, my wife, is here. And by the way, we, we are part of this fellowship. Just, <laughs> just in case you, you, you thought I'm coming from Senegal, look like Senegal. <laughs> we, we are from this fellowship. Um, I know there are people who have come since we, we started this uh, uh, campus, so we very much part of this, and uh, we thank God. Jeff and Joan were here in the first service. Oh, Jeff is here. Come on, Jeff. Simamo wafanyia hivi. Wafanyia ile kitu, yes. Come on. That's Jeff. And we thank God. Uh, in our kingdom, we have Jeff and Joan, because the king and the queen, we, yes. King David and Queen Esther. I know, I know. Yes, uh, we are glad to be here and serving the Lord. Uh, we want to look at a subject. Um, we are calling it Redigging the Wells of Honor. I might not be a very good preacher, but I'll talk about this because it is important. And I'm saying that because we are, we are different. I cannot, I cannot uh, preach like Reverend Nwangombe. Every time he preaches, I am cracking my... I, I don't know whether he has stopped. Does he still do the same? Yes. I used to call him... Uh, have, you, have you listened to Jesse Duplantis? Yes. And he, keeps, he makes you keep laughing the whole time. You're wondering, when is the message coming? The message came long time. So if he has stopped, he must have changed. But if he's doing the same, he's the same, same person who was preaching to us the other side. Serious messages, but we are laughing. Can you imagine? So I might not preach like him, or like uh, Pastor Beatrice, uh, but I'll just be myself. Am I allowed to do that? Yes. Thank you. We're looking at uh, Digging Wells of Honor, and we'll be looking at honor, um, and, and, and we will have practicals at the end of the day, because honor is not just in the lips, it is also in the actions. Amen. In the first service, I told the guys who are here that the things that we've been preaching on since we started the year, it's good to see you. Wow, unajua hapo unaona watu wengi sana ambao nimewasalimia nyote wale ninaona ambao tuko tumeonana. Um, the things that we've been preaching here since we started the year is what has been passed down to us uh, since we received the the word for the year, redigging and repossessing. And so we will redig until Nothing remains undug. And so part of what we are talking about is in the redigging and repossessing. And we are redigging the wells of honor because it is scriptural. It is biblical for us to do that. God is all about honor. And God needs us to honor him. And needless to say, God has honored us that we are alive today, that we can breathe, that we can, every time I think about a human being, that you wake up in the morning and you coordinate, you tell your legs, you are going to move fast and then the other leg will follow and as we do that, we are gaining mileage, distance, we are covering distance until we get to this place. Oh, 
knowing very well that there are people who woke up and they couldn't do that. Maybe they were doing that yesterday, but today they can't. So God has honored us. Now, honor is recognition. Honor is recognition. Honor is acknowledging. Honor is, is getting to a place where you know were it not for so and so, were it not for God, I wouldn't have been here. And so, you acknowledge, you recognize that somebody has gone before you and done something. And as we recognize them, there are certain things that we do. I took the first service because uh, a lot of our young people go to... Um, Okay. You go to functions where okay, you go to a place where there's some performance. Hello? And uh, somebody stands and they're, they're giving a, a spoken word. We know spoken word? It's, it's the word that you speak. And we have artists who are doing that today. Or rappers. They stand and they rap. They rap around the world for Jesus. And some of us don't know what they are saying. We just hear, yeah, Jesus. Now, we know it's gospel when they say that. <laughs> but for the young people, from point one to the last, wakohivi pamoja. So when they are done with their performance, what happens? They celebrate. They give a, what they call a standing ovation. Now, most of us old people don't know why they are standing because we never had anything. <laughs> we look around and then we see, oh, people are standing. Then we stand. And now that is honor, is recognizing what uh, the people are doing. But I know the, uh, the older folks have a way of recognizing when you do something which the young people don't know and don't understand. And so all of us have a place. And, and that's, that's what we want to look at. And as we do this, at the end of this service, there will be a requirement for you because we have come, like I said, the things that we have talked about in the course of the year since we began. We received, we are just praying and hoping that we'll be faithful servants that will pass it on to the people. Because the benefit is yours. If I knew something is good and didn't allow you to be a partaker of the same, or not just be denying you the opportunity of knowing, but also the benefit that goes with it. That is the place to say amen. amen. I know the good. I know something is good. I deny you that thing. It is not just the denying of that good thing. It is the benefit that comes with doing it that I'm denying you. And that is not right. So that even when it is not those kind of messages where we say, Hallelujah, Amen, glory to God, we will still preach it. Because you need to honor. You need to honor the people who have gone before you. You need to honor the people who are around where you are. You need to honor the people who you are working with. You need to honor your employees even. You need to honor your employers. And we'll talk about that in a short while and then we'll be bringing this to a close. And God would speak about honor. And, and, and as we honor God, we get to that place where he opens doors for us to partake of what comes out of the honor that we give to him. In Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 12, it says, honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother. Now, we, we have come into the city of Nairobi. And some of us, when we left, we have not gone back there. We see you doing well in this city of Nairobi. But behind all this that we see, there is a parent somewhere. There is a father somewhere. Fathers, fathers, there are 
mothers somewhere that need to be honored. You could be highly lifted. People could be bowing before you because you are the who is who. But you have a mother and a father. They need to be honored. Reverend Wangombe says the way to honor a father and a mother is not just to speak those good words. An SMS does. An Mpesa message does wonders. And it is not in the how much. It is in the heart of remembering to do that. And so, honor your father and mother. And scriptures would say that it may go well with you. I don't know how many of us came to the city because it was not going well with us wherever we were. And some of us ran from the village. We ran away because there was a lot of poverty. The way you are seeing us today is not the way we were when we came. God has helped us. And every time we think of going back to the village, you're saying, where? Uh -uh. But I want to charge you, go back there. Honor that father, honor that mother. And go right now when they are alive. For those whose parents are alive. Even those whose parents live in Nairobi. Nairobi is your country. Like Rebecca. Up country like in Rebecca and Upper Car West. Up country like in Boss. Mwehoko. So let's go there. Let's honor uh, our parents. It is scriptural. It continues to say in uh, the book of. Uh, Samuel chapter number 20, chapter number 2, Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30, says, those who honor me, I will honor. Psalm 8 verse number 5 says, God has crowned men with glory and honor. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9 says, we should honor the Lord with our wealth. And we can go on and on, on and on. God desires that we honor honor, that we get to the place of honor. Now, I want to pick a story that is uh, known to all of us in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 9. I'm going to read from verse number 1 through to 11. I'm not promising we'll finish to 11, but we'll just pick the story. Now, the, this story is about a guy called Mephibosheth. Say Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Listen to your neighbor as they say Mephibosheth. <laughs> not Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. That one. Now, Mephibosheth is a son to Jonathan, who was a son to Saul. Saul was a king. And Saul had issues with the servant of God, David. And for a long time, he sought to kill David. But we pick it up from uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 9, and verse number 1. It says, Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? David has become king. The guy who was following him to kill him, Saul, is gone. He's dead, like Kufd, with the son. They are no longer there. And David becomes king. And when he becomes king, then those days, what used to happen is if the king came in, he would seek to eliminate everybody who was in that other regime. You hunt for them. You break into their houses. You get everything that you need to get. Does it look like our story? Yes. You actually kill them. So that the regime is wiped out. But David becomes king and decides to be different. He decides to honor Mephibosheth. And so if we continue, if you give us, uh, uh, says verse number two, and there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, are you Ziba? He said, at your service. Uh, no, nah, I can't miss that. Are you Rebecca? How do you answer? <laughs> so it is Sam now who is asking so, you, are you Esther? At your service. So, that is the way you shall be answering going forward. <laughs> so, um, verse number three. 
The king said, is there no still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. Continue, verse number four. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Mashir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face, prostrated himself, and then David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. And I will restore to you all the land uh, of Saul, your grandfather. And you shall eat bread at my table continually. And you can continue on and on and on. David decides to honor Jonathan. Actually decides to honor Mephibosheth. But by extension, Jonathan, who had done so many things for him. Who had been a prophet for, for, for David, who had been a confidant for David. I'm sure when Mephibosheth, um, and the story of Mephi Mephibosheth, by the way, is that he was dropped by the maid servant because things had changed now and they were running away. And as they were running away, he fell, he broke both of his legs and he became lame. Now, this time when David calls for them, he knows how things are done in this kingdom. When the king goes, the one who comes in eliminates everybody who was. So as he comes, I'm thinking, he's coming like, it's my last day. I'm going to die. I'm, I'm just not lame. They're going to kill me. So he comes because the king has sent for him. And he comes and David says, relax, you're not dying. You shall eat at the king's table. And so he lifted Mephibosheth, who was coming from a royal family, but because David has come in, suddenly things have changed. David coming from a shepherd boy, he's lifted to be royalty. And he decides to honor uh, that young man. As we talk about honor, realize this, that honor elevates and attracts blessings from God. And so if that's going to happen, we need to be people who intentionally practice honor. We will practice all the other things. We will dig the wells of prayer. We will dig the, well, the wells of this and the other. But we will also dig the wells of honor. And we need to practice it. And so, you may want to ask, so who do we honor? And God says, honor everyone honor everybody. In the story of, of, of David and Mephibosheth, uh, David decides to honor Mephibosheth. Now, God is calling us to honor people because people are God's people. Big, small, schooled and schooled are God's people because God values the soul of a human being. He is the creator of life and so we need to honor the life that God has given and that life is in the people who are around us. And so, if you would be asking, who should we honor? I'm here to tell you, we need to honor people. Honor all people. Scripture says in 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 17, show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the king or honor the emperor. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor king, honor the king. And so, if you're looking for who to honor, the person to honor is right beside you. The person to honor is the king. Is a family of believers. Honor the people of God. Don't just honor the people who are deserving. Because there are people who look like they deserve honor. Not just those that deserve they are actually people who honor is due. Some of them are even called your excellency. Honorable. 
Those plus those others that don't look like they're honorable. Honor them. Practice honor. And Jesus taught about this. His teaching on the golden rule was that we do to others whatever you'd like them to do to you. Honor people. When you honor people, it brings elevation. We need to practice honor, and in honoring, if you're looking for who else to honor, honor the authority. Every authority is God's authority. Every leadership that comes into place, God has allowed it. Indeed, even the leadership that you would think, this is not of God. God has allowed that leadership to be there. So authority is God's authority. If you do not honor authority, there are consequences that come with it. And I'm saying authority because I know there are groups that, you know, we, th we think, and it's true, they should be outlawed. Some of them are, they are evil. The Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda's of this world. Let me tell you, the authority in that group, God has allowed it to be there. And some of those things happen because there is an assignment that God has. <laughs> Can you imagine? If you don't honor authority, they clear you. The authority needs to be obeyed. It only gets, ah, yeah, we, we, we mess with it when we come to the Christendom. Because you cannot kill us. But the truth is, there's some dying that happens in the spirit when you don't honor authority. The authorities that we honor... should be the authority of the pastor, the authority of scripture, the authority of the government of the day, the authority at home, the authority in your local church, in your ladies group, in the cell group, in the zone. I am here to submit to you all that authority has been sanctioned by God. None of that authority exists without God. I know we are, we, we are living in times when uh, we, we, because of democracy, we are allowed to say whatever we want to say. But democracy, by the way, is not divine. Democracy is not of God. So that you're saying, we are a democratic country, so we are closer to God. It's a lie. It is a system of governance. It's a system of the world. And I'm not saying it is not. That's what we are doing, well, hopefully. And so today you will find us. Because we do not like what has happened in the last couple of months, there are people who are still stuck in September. When did we do the elections? August. August. Some of us are still stuck in August. We don't recognize this government. It is an illegitimate government. Who said? So how are you praying for this country? I know you have your views. In actual fact, some of us have details of how this election was rigged. There was a server that was in Adriba. Have you heard about that? And another one that was in Venezuela. The one that was at uh, the telling whatever, you, yeah, that was fake. Please, how did you know these things? Your place and my place, when the government has come into place, is to honor authority. We did our civic right by voting. But after the government is instituted, please, wake up, smell the coffee. We have left August. Spend your energies on praying for the government of the day to become better if you don't like them. And even if you like them, pray that they will become what God desires them to become. Give service to the people of this country. But honor, you shall honor them. It's by force, by fire. You shall not be found to be the one speaking against the government, yet you are a Christian. How unworthy. 
Hawa sijui nini. Muone. Inajulikana. Fuliza. Kuna hata fuliza inasemekana sijui nini. All those things. Yeah, it's true. E, hata ile nini. Please, honor the authority of the day. Don't say amen, but I, that is a point. <laughs> Scripture says in Romans chapter 13 and verse number 1 to 2, everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against God. That which God has instituted. And they will be punished. You dishonor authority, you are rebelling against God, and there is punishment that comes with it. And maybe even when they are coming to punish you because of being disobedient and dishonoring the authority, we also suffer. Could it be? You know, you can go in the could it be? Could it be that's why we are? Let's honor the authority that God has instituted. In your place of work, let's go to our places of work. Sunday, Meisha, Mijioni, Tunamuka Monday. Sinikesho? Tunaenda pale wale ambao tunaenda kwa stage. Tutu, 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 tutu. Tuko kazini. Tunafika sangapi kazini? You don't know. I work for a nation. These people are so bad. Please leave. Leave that place. Go to another better place. But if you're going to be there, honor that authority. Your blessings are tied with that Asian who you don't like because they are not kind. Let them suffer for what they are doing. You are not the judge. Your place is to honor the authority. Hey, you do not know my employer. You know my employer is, is a single mother. So what? Honor the authority. That authority is there because God designed that authority to be there. How about students who are in school? Now, I know they are not here, but maybe some could be here, including the school of leaders. <laughs> Honor the authority that is in that school. Every time you find a student being the one who is leading in riots, they are the ones who are caught in this and the other, sneaking out of school, Unless the Lord comes to deliver you, that teacher who you do, you do not honor has been placed in your life by God. And I can bet a hundred and one times, when the teachers say, this one can be better than the truth, it is true what they are saying. And if the teacher says, this one has a problem with behavior, you shall find them after they are done with school out here. The same thing that was said by the teacher. It finds you out. And so that authority that you're thinking, Mimi niko hapa nisome, from one to from one, token yende ni kue, my own boss. Ah, the authority inside there, you need to honor. And we cannot overemphasize these things. But the truth is, that authority is God's authority. There is also family authority to consider. Children are encouraged to honor their parents because of the blessings it provokes so that it may go well with you. It may go well with me. Honor the parents. There is an authority that you need to consider in the family. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. And maybe you could be here and you're saying every, everything that you touch to do there is nothing that works. Well, there is a place you need to consider. Have you honored your father and your mother? Maybe that's where your answer is. If you did it, things are going to turn around. 
I'm just saying maybe. You came to Nairobi. <laughs> and it's like Nairobi has, re has refused to receive you. Every place you go, it is not receiving you. You will want to consider, did you honor your father and your mother? Husbands are directed to honor their wives so that their prayers will not be hindered. All those who are married, your prayers. If you want your prayers to go direct, like the sacrifice of Abel, honor your wife. First Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 7. Wives also should honor their husbands. Shall I say, even if they are not believers. But you know, the church folk, we think it is only when they are believers that we will honor them. Even that one who is not a believer. It is you who is married to them. It's not us. And God requires that you honor that authority. How is it possible that it is just now that you're thinking it's not possible to honor this person? When you were getting married, was he the same person? Well, maybe they have changed. It's okay. But how are they going to come back to the fold if you dishonor them? And they're saying, if this is God, the way you dishonor me, iyo kanisa sita kanyanga. Very fast, let me, let me go through the benefits of honor and then we will be looking at your parts your part in uh, all this. One benefit of honor is honor starts by praying. When you pray for somebody, you, when you honor them, you will pray for them. When you're honoring your pastor, when you're honoring bishop, you will pray for him. You will pray for your boss when you honor them. You will pray for that school. You will honor them by praying. So prayer and benefits that come uh, out of that is that after you start praying for somebody, there's some liking that starts happening. You just start liking that person. They might have been the person you don't want to see, but you pray for them. You start liking them. Suddenly something happens in your inside and you start liking them. Number two, if there is an issue between you and them, then you start getting into the place of forgiveness. God just brings it into your heart, the need to forgive. But you know, there are people who say that one, I cannot forgive. When I remember what they did to me. Now, when you start praying for them, God works in a way that he causes you to get to a place where you want to forgive. And forgiveness then becomes a benefit that comes out of honor. So you honor them by praying for them, and then you start liking them, and then you get to a place of forgiving. Yesterday in our meeting, um, in the morning, please don't go and talk about this when you go out there. It was supposed to be for the G12. Promise? Promise? Ai, kuna mtu anafanya anasema nitaongea mimi nitaongea je. Sasa na mimi sisemi. But anyway, enda useme lakini ujue nimesema usiseme. On on a bit. <laughs> we were saying when when you like somebody, don't wait until Let me start from their their birthday. Don't wait until it's their birthday. You tell them, "Ah, oh, Reverend Wangombe, we we just love you for the way you make us." Rejoice and have fun in church. Tell him even now because he's the same and you have been in when he's preaching. Don't wait until it is the anniversary, wedding anniversary. Nakama hata oleo. Nakama hata oleo. Tuangoja mpaka wakati atawa. Nyi utamambia. Or some of us wait until we are dead. See that pastor. <laughs> he was a good. Tell me now. Don't wait until we're in the coffin. 
And there is nobody, there is none of us, the high and low, the schooled and unschooled, that does not want to hear something that people like about them. If you are part of those people who don't like, please, we need to sit down and get to know what kind of person you are. Yes, when you meet Patricia, tell Patricia, I like your hair. Patricia Nanda, but it is true, Patricia. <laughs> Look for something that you like in somebody and tell them when they can hear. Tell them when they are here right now. Tell them when they can respond with a smile. Don't wait until they are gone. So, let's hear those things. What is it that we like? And because of that, then you'll be honoring them. And that is something that we need to practice. When we honor other people, like David, we get elevated. When we, when you honor, when we honor other people, we get lifted, we get elevated. It could be your, your elevation is coming. It is you who is holding your elevation because you have refused to say, Mimi Suezi Nikamwambia. Then you are stuck in one place like forever. Just honor people, they are God's people. Honor people, they are God's people. We have said if you want it to go well with you, honor your father and mother and it shall be well with you. Honor your spouse and your prayers will be answered. You could be asking, now that we've talked about the benefits of honor, what will it take me? What will I do to honor? So that we are not just talking about honor there. We bring it down here. What is it that I'm going to do? As, as, as we started, I said, every time we go to the prayers in Akuru, this church has a, a tradition at least I have seen it for a couple of years as we went for these prayers. The pastors coming from all over Kenya will come and bless Bishop Mark. Not because he is in need of anything. I guess he has something. Siakonakakiro. Akonakakiro. And he's not saying if you're coming to bless the bishop, come with 1,000, 5,000. That is you. Whatever God puts in your heart. So that you're not just coming to say, I honor you, man of God. Have a sacrifice that is going together with that. At least that's what we have seen happening. And bishop is not shy, our bishop here. Because sooner than later, we'll be blessing him. Now, I know some of you are saying, I knew he was going there. It's okay. <laughs> Please, if you nod your head, I'll know that we are together in this. Why? It's because this thing has been proven. Bishop would talk about when the leadership that is there right now went to bless the founder of Deliverance Church. And they went and bought him a car, gave him a million shillings. They didn't have it in the bank. They gave out of want, out of need. They didn't have it, but they said, we're going to take a million Kenya shillings to him. You should have seen the old man crying. Not because he was sad, but because you're looking back, God called you, you started this movement in this country, and now, lo and behold. How about when it was done to Bishop Tumi Singh? Were you there? Where was it? We did it at Nyao Stadium. I was a young man. Now I'm old. I know it works. <laughs> and Bishop would recall when, when we go for these meetings, he tells us that is the time the Reverend's Church started seeing the millions. They honored the fathers in a very small way, but they started seeing growth. They started seeing elevation. They started seeing, we had churches all over that are built on road reserves. Eh? 
Deliverance Church, Zimmerman, Iko Parikwa Road Reserve. You wake up one day, all the kiosks are gone, and the church is also gone. I'm a riparian. No, I can say, I'm a riparian. Why? Because we didn't even have land to build those churches. Our pastors were suffering in want. Our pastors were suffering in want. Our pastors were suffering in want. <laughs> and the best they could do was to drive a, a bicycle. Today you go for those meetings, corporate organizations are looking for deliverance. What can we partner with you? The secret was in the honor. The gospel that people are saying, our bishop, our bishop here says, when they first came here with the Karuganos who are here, they were told, ah, ni watu wa mashetani. But sooner than later, the message started going forth. It is now accepted. You're able to make inroads in the lives of people and cause the impact that God has called you to make starts with the honor. Now, what is your place, you and I, in honoring the men of God? Number one, you are looking at what can I do? What is it that I'm going to do? Besides just coming next Sunday, by the way, it is next Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll, go, we'll be having envelopes here. They'll be there, pastor. And you'll be coming with your gift to honor the man of God. You're, you're looking for, and, and this is a cry of the pastor's heart. People who can lift the load of the work that God has given. Because God will not give you a vision that you'll be able to accomplish alone. You imagine were it not for him hearing the word of God and the voice of God, we wouldn't be here. But he can also not be here and be wherever he is today. So the Lord here needs to be shared. And so the pastor is looking for people who can lift the load. That's your, your place. Your Lord lift us. And the Lord can be anything. It can be the ministry where you are serving because without you, MC, we are not able to do what you do. But we recognize what you do and we honor you for that. And that is your purpose in God for this time. And if you don't do it, we will suffer, yes, but you will also not be fulfilled. Say, ah, I have served in this ushering for a long time. I'm going to Nyona Ibira Itaenda. Ah, it's okay. You go. Let's see how it will go with you. And I'm not threatening. I'm just saying every one of us needs to come in and like... The servants of God, when, uh, of God, when, when Moses is, is praying and the Israelites are fighting, there were two men who went in and were lifting the hands of Moses, Aaron and who? They supported the men of God. And as they did that, there was progress. There was victory. They were gaining ground. Every time the hands went down, they lost in the battle. They realized, our work is to lift the hands of this man. And if that's what God has called me to do, I shall do it gladly. I shall do it with a passion. Now, that is your place. Seek to know what is this that God has called you to do. You didn't, you're not just a, a statistic. There is something that God has called you to do. Please become the Lord lifter. Be willing to be the person who lifts the Lord and who shares in the work that is happening. Aaron and who supported his hands. One on one side and the other on the other side. And as they remained there, steady, until the sun went down, they overcame. The pastor needs the arons and the hurls of this time. And you are that person. The number two thing that you're going to do is to identify with your pastor. First Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 12 says, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Identify. Now, in identifying with your pastor, I can push this and push it, and push it even further. Some of us, and I'm glad he's not here, some of us, we do not care what happens in the course of the week, you have assignments.
going to wherever. Nobody knows where you are. But when you come here, and like, okay, like he had a birthday, isn't it? When was it? Some of us don't know. But anyway, those of us that know, we flooded the Facebook and those other social medias. My daddy, my father, my father, my prophet, my, my prophet, my prophet. Awa. <laughs> but he does not know you. You have not identified with him. When you decide this coming Sunday, I am going to Timbuktu. He doesn't know. He doesn't even cover you with the prayers. But it is true, you can go to God direct. I agree. But if you're going to say, my father, my prophet, my, my prophet, my prophet, let him know where you are. Let him know what's happening. Invite him to your village. He will come. I can tell you for a fact. And especially if you're saying, I'm going to honor my father and my mother. He shall be there. I'm a witness. So identify with him. Identify with him. Identify with your pastor. Privately and publicly. Number three. Let your pastor know personally that you acknowledge them. Now some of us we respect Bishop so much, we cannot even talk to him. Wow. See, what is it that you talk about with Bishop? Huh? Me, the way I respect him, I cannot talk to him. Ah, he's your father. And we are not saying become familiar. We're saying let him know that you're there. And that you think good about him. You are praying for him. Speak it to him. It's the man of God I'm praying for you. With long life. In whatever mountain that God has given you. You shall. It is your assignment. You shall. Take the mountain that God has given you. If he's seeing. You encourage him to go for it. Because you also have your mountain. And the other one. And the other one. And everybody else. And that which God is doing in his life. It is okay to speak those words to him. Personally, he has feelings like a human being. <laughs> of course, he is. There are times he is high, there are times he is low. As a human being, speak words of encouragement. One of our pastors likes to tell Bishop, Bishop, how are you? These are greetings of one of our pastors. Bishop, how are you? Of course, Bishop says, I'm fine. How is your soul? Meaning, are you still born again, Bishop? <laughs> and it's a good thing, isn't it? How is your pocket? Yeah, well, my pocket. And then he'll continue. But some of us, you cannot even... How can you ask Bishop about his soul? Bishop is supposed to be living with God. Uh-huh. <laughs> let him know you personally. Acknowledge... Um, let your pastor know personally that you're thinking good, you're praying. And especially from, I, 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 I dare to say this, we have come through the pandemic. And I, I don't want to talk about COVID. But we came through COVID and somehow, somehow, we held together. I don't know where the wisdom came from. If there was a time that we worked, it is during the COVID. We had meetings Right, left, and center. Every, we had eight hours meetings from nine in the morning to two. Are those eight hours? Okay, there are many hours. And like almost every day. And he would go down to the details. Where is so and so? What is happening in this cell? And I'm like, how are you able to do this? Oh, pastor is here. And the rest of the G12 members. Where is, what is happening? I'm like, whew. and we were able to hold together. Ministries were born out of this season. There were all reasons for somebody to pull out and say, this thing has happened to all of us. Please allow me just to take care of my family. He didn't do that. 
He took us through the pandemic. With the help of God. And the church stood. Up to and until now, there are churches that closed and they haven't come back. But he allowed himself to be vulnerable and carried us through. It is possible for us to go to God and ask, how do we honor this, your servant? Write a note to him. If you're able to take him for lunch, by the way, he eats. <laughs> <laughs> he also loves dawa. <laughs> and he will take dawa. Upper, upper, you could night on him. Yes. And finally, allow me to say this. Sometimes the pastor needs to be pastored. I say the pastor needs to be pastored. When everybody is going to the pastor with their needs, they fought with their wife, their children are wayward, job is not working, business is not working. What qualifications are those? Business, parenting, wifeing and husbanding? You know, what qualifications are those? But we do not care. So, Pastor, it's about, I have a court case. He's still a lawyer. Sometimes the pastor needs a pastor. And you could be that pastor. You could be that pastor. Scripture says in First um, Timothy chapter number five and verse number seventeen says, "Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine." I am one beneficiary of the ministry of DCIKZ. When I came to this ministry, I was a young man. That is another young man who was... So Bertha is saying very young. Out of this ministry, I got a wife. Faris Jenga was very young. And he was our administrator then. Even Bertha was young. 30 years ago, no, no, better. Mweke 30 years, minus. 33. So there are benefits that I could number one after another by submitting and subjecting myself to this ministry. That even if you say it doesn't work, it is about you, not me. And so when it is time to honor, take your place. Honor the men of God. If you haven't seen results, they are coming. If you have seen results, ask God to help you. So that as we come next Sunday, we are coming with that heart of gratitude. We are honoring the men of God because of what God has allowed him to do. And we are careful. We are not saying we are worshiping bishop. Far from it. Actually, he, wouldn't, he will never preach what we are preaching today. But we are the people who go there and we hear it. But he doesn't preach this. Now, we will preach it because we had it. The people who did it, they talked about how they benefited. Why shouldn't we do it here? And so, as we bring this to a close, my prayer is that you become a person who honors people. Honor the people who God has, uh, God has given people around you. Some are workmates, some are junior to you, others are your seniors. Neighbors, even. Honor people, they are God's people. Honor your pastor. And for now we are saying our pastor is Bishop Jim Kimani. Let's honor him 
let's unlock whatever it is that, you know, is, if, is there an elevation that I'm looking for? And, and remember we said it's not even in the how much. It is in the heart of just coming and plugging in. Because it is biblical to do that. The leader needs people to support them. It shall not be said that we are the same, same people who sit under this ministry and then we are found to be talking against the men of God. A friend of mine used to say, Unaingia kwa nyumba, Bishop Choma. Muna mchoma hivi, muna mchoma, muna mkanga, muna mpindua hivi. Hey. Anafu mnaanza kumkata kata. Let it not be said of us. Let it not be that you will be found in those conversations. And not just the bishop, even your neighbor. What value does it add for you to talk about your brother, your sister? That you have facts. Even if they are fallen, please. Even if they are fallen, I repeat, even if they are, don't tell us about them. Pray for them. Restore them, as scripture would say. Our place as a congregation, and I'm bringing this to a close, we purpose to bless the man of God. We can recount. We know what has happened. And we are saying, it's not because he's in a need, it's because we know that which we do, which is biblical, unlocks something for me. There are doors that I need to be opened. There are opportunities. I said in the first service that I'm one person who will not shy away from using Bishop's name. <laughs> so why are you saying we cannot pass here? Enough times. Well, arrogant, proud pastor. It's okay. But I have the name. I can use it and access Some of you will sit under the sun because me, I don't want to use the name of the bishop. It's okay. You sit under the sun. <laughs> so, we do this and it is biblical and it is honorable for us to do that. What is it that you are trusting God for? As we prepare to come next Sunday, please come with your gifts, not your offering. Offering Badu Itakua. At a tithe. Here's your tithe. Your gift. Hello. Hello. On Sunday, the 5th, we will be honoring Bishop in this place. And as you come, don't just come and say, well, I'm going to say, I'm going to Come believing God. What is it that you want to unlock? What area do you want God to come through for you? As you practice God's word, and we, we're saying that is just part of it. We have also said that take part of the Lord. Don't just come here and sit. Be part of what is happening. There are ministries that you can plug into. As you do that, you shall be honoring the man of God. We call for meetings. Ladies' meetings. Men's meetings. You do not appear. Wednesday, Bible study. Monday, prayer meetings. You don't come. One other way of honoring the man of God is being present in those meetings. So please, what is it that you're trusting God for? Could it be that in honoring the man of God, something is going to unlock? Allow me to pray. As we go, we go and prepare. But as we go also, that which you have trusted God for, Whatever it is, I pray that in our minds we will be sanitized not to think, eh, hai, see you on atoa sana. Nahafu akipewa atapeleka wapi. Enough times we have blessed Bishop and he has blessed somebody else. You know, there is there's, there's a day we did the blessing <laughs> and Bishop was asking, so what do you want me to do? You should have heard us, those of us who are kimbelembele, the sanguines in the house. Go for a cruise. And after Bishop received it, said, 
pushing it into some project we are doing. So it's like, Allah, we are different. <laughs> so it is not in your place to start asking, Ile pesa tulikutolea sadaka kubwa, ulipereka wapi? Relax. Let's do it. And do it to honor God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you that we could look at honor. And because this is biblical, we will not shy from talking about it. Yet in this same ministry, our Lord, we have, we, we have been beneficiaries, our Father, of the covering that we have received, the ministry that we have received over time, our Father, and finding ourselves sober in doctrine and in biblical teaching, our Father, we want to say it is because your hand has been upon our pastor. We also pray that our Father and our Lord, that as he continues to follow through, listening to the voice of God, our place is to pray for him. Our place is to lift him through the struggles and the battles that would be coming his way. Our place is to continue calling upon you that you will come through for him. That the vision that he has received from you will continue to be clear every day. And as he walks the entire church to that place that you are taking as our Lord, we will do so with honor in the name of Jesus. And so we pray that our Father and our Lord, that you would allow us to be partakers of the blessings that come together with doing this act of honoring him and in obedience to your word. And so we thank you this afternoon. We bless you. We pray that our Father, you will give us a wonderful week. That as we come on Sunday, we come a cheerful people. We come a people who are grateful for what God has done. We come a people who are glad because of the benefits that we have received under this ministry. Even as we honor you. We thank you for our bishop wherever he is this afternoon together with our mama Alice. We pray that in the name of Jesus that you watch over them as they continue to do the ministry that you've given them to do. In this country and beyond our Father, that you will go before them, giving them every form of victory that they need in the name of Jesus. And for us, dear Lord, we pray that we'll identify our place. We'll identify our place in this ministry. And as it will become the lifters of the Lord that needs to be carried. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.